How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upholster a waterfall step. This video is sponsored by Tools for Flooring and EJ Welts. Tools for Flooring is America's number one online store for all your flooring supplies and tools. Be sure to check them out. I just want to point out how I do have this step prepped out for my carpet. I've got tack strip along the bottom, along the back, all the way flush with the edge here, down here along the side of my step and I have my tack strip cut at an angle probably about a 60 degree angle 50 60 degree angle here that way I can get my pad all the way over to the side of my step for a nice smooth nosing and right here on the riser I have my tack strip stopped back about an inch and a half inch and a quarter from the edge of my riser right here I have my pad also cut from the corner of the nosing down to the edge of my tack strip here. The size of the carpet, how I got my size for it, I'm gonna take and measure all the way from my wall and I'm gonna take, hold this here and push down under, under the edge of the lip and see what I got there. And you can see it's about 27. I give myself a couple inches. So I actually cut this piece of 29 inches for my length of the step I'm going to take my tape measure around hook it on the bottom part right there on the very bottom of my riser come all the way over and down to the front and with that it's about 20 and a half again I give myself a little bit to play with so I cut this piece 22 inches so I have a 22 by 29 inch piece to do this step I do want to point out that we need to have our pile of the carpet laying down so that it's running over the step this way. What I did, I run me a row and uh, row cut the edge that's going up against the wall. From that, I put a square on it and squared the bottom off, okay? That way, when I place it on here, I know it's going to be all nice and square to fit on there nicely, okay? Uh, first thing I want to do is put my, place my carpet on the step Make sure it is down all the way to the next riser and I want to make sure that it gets a good latch onto the tack strip I had on the riser. To do that I'm going to take my mallet handle, not a stair tool, and I'm just going to rake that on there. I don't know if you can see that or not. It pushes the pins through the actual backing of the carpet. Now whenever I push on that it's all nice and secured it's not going to go anywhere so if you use something metal it's definitely going to destroy your pins use a wooden mallet handle and it's going to be perfect your pins will be in good shape taken off with this now i'm going to start in the center of my step and just give me a little push i actually want to get a pretty good little push there because this is stretching the step on there i'm going to use my stair tool just to collapse it there onto the tack strip the very next push I do is at an angle to the left to the wall. It don't really matter which way you work, to the left or to the right first. I just always work to the left. It's just what I'm used to doing. Okay. We now have all that secured. Next thing I want to do is take a sharp blade, a brand new blade, and I'm going to slice directly down the side of my riser here with my blade. Just going to run my blade right down the side of my riser until I meet my tread right there. Now that's completely released. I'm going to go ahead. The, this is the very next thing that you need to do. It's really important that you do this now. Um, this whole corner right here that's going to be cut into little pieces to wrap my uh, tread right here on the back side. It's going to be kind of uh, delicate and brittle, you might say. It tends to fall apart a lot when you're working with a five or six pick backing. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and strengthen this up. I'm going to take my latex and I'm just going to cover this all up here and allow this to dry while I do the rest of my step. So I'm going to get a good, good amount of latex on this and then I'll just rub it in. Take a scrap piece of carpet and just let this be drying while I go on to my next step, to the next process. Next thing you want to do is come underneath where your carpet is run up over the step, right to the corner right here of, the, of your 
tread we're going to make a cut straight out from the corner of our tread right here the top corner of our tread we're going to slice straight out with that being done i'm going to go ahead and place this up here with something on it just to hold that back out of the way while we work on this now what i want to do um, remember me talking about holding our tack strip back on the riser so now i want to take and measure from that tack strip that was on the riser and we are going to go about uh it is it is an inch and a half okay i'm going to take now and measure from the edge of my tr my step the stringer and i'm going to put me a mark at about an inch and a quarter right there okay all right here's my mark i want to take that mark up to the corner of my step here of my piece of carpet right there i want to make that cut that's what i'm going to do right now Okay. Now I want to take and pull this around. You want to be sure that whenever you do this, you're nice and flat on your riser right here. Okay, you don't want to you don't want to do this or anything like that. You want to make sure that you pull it up at the correct angle so that your riser is nice and flat. Okay. When you get that pulled around nicely, go ahead and slide your knife right along the bottom of your tread. Get yourself a little reference cut right there, okay? With that been done, I like to use my little uh, row cutter as a mini straight edge, okay? So I'm going to take and place it on my cut right there. Place it right here on my reference cut that I just made. That gives me a little angle right there, okay? I'm going to go ahead and make that cut now. Alrighty, now that we got that, what I want to do with this piece now is tuck it under. This is the reason why we had our pad cut at an angle and cut short right there. We want to take this and fold it under like so right here. And make sure everything fits nicely without overlapping our pad or our tack strip on our riser, okay? Okay. I'm happy with that. I, I can feel right here, it's actually buttoned right up against my pad. That's exactly what you want right there, okay? So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and secure this to my tread and my riser just like that, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reach my tip in here and put some adhesive, put some hot glue right on the riser right there. And then I'm going to push this right against it and let it dry for just a minute. Now that that's set up, I'm going to go ahead and place some hot glue right here on this 45 cut going down that way and attach it to my riser. Once I get that stuck there, I'm going to seal that cut up right there so that we're not having any issues in the future. I want to get just a little bubble of hot glue on my very tip right there, and I'm just going to touch it to this cut edge right here. That's just going to ensure that it does not fall apart over time or, more importantly, while I'm sitting here working on it. You want to keep all this stuff together. And that is exactly why I latexed this back edge right here. Next thing we want to do is work on this overhang right here. We want to take, push this down tightly. Use your thumbs to push it in the crevice right there really good. And we want to get this cut off flush with our tread, I mean with our riser or skirting board. I'm just going to put my little slice there, there, keeping it tight up in there, and there. Now I can fold this up. I got me three little reference cuts. I can just play uh, dot to dot, you might say. Just connect all of those little dots there. What I want to do is exactly where my tread meets the riser you got to be real specific on this right where my tread meets the riser we want to put us a little reference cut right there okay right there okay now once again i'm going to use my little miniature straight edge per se 
and get me a straight line on this. We got our cut made right here for our seam. I'm going to take again and just seal that up so that we don't have any issues now or in the future. This glue is now dried and ready to put together. Um, I'm going to take some glue, spread on my edge right here on the edge of my riser. That way when I pull this down, everything is going to be nice and tight and secured to the tread itself. Uh, what I'm using to do that with is the Trax 100 watt glue gun that you can pick all of these tools up at toolsforflooring.com. When you get close to a particular something that you do not want to get glue on, it really helps if you'll smear it like this. It helps it from running. It's not going to run and create a problem and get where you don't want it to get. So I will just take and smear it in anywhere that I don't want it to be. I'm going to put this together just like I would a traditional seam and carpet. You're going to be left with just a little bird's beak like right here in the corner of your step. I will always take my electric tacker and shoot a staple right here in the corner of it. And to do that, I'm using my crane power tacker. Once again, you can pick this up at Tools for Flooring. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and place some hot melt adhesive on the bottom of my tread here. That's going to allow me to tuck my carpet to it and secure that off. Again, place this where you don't want it to run or drip. Smear it in like that and it don't get on there so thick. And it stops it from running or dripping. And I'm just going to tuck that right in there like so. And it grabs really fast. That's a good thing about hot glue. Now, only thing we have left is to address this back corner right here. I'm going to fold this directly back like so. And this latex is going to have this really nice and pliable. And also, it's going to keep it from shredding while we're making these little cuts. I'm going to take me a marker and I'm going to just do this for your visibility that you can see exactly what I'm doing. I want to get me a straight line right in the center of my tread right there. And again, I have a brand new blade so that I'm not tearing the carpet to pieces. And what I want to do is take this carpet as it folds up like this from the bottom, or you could do it from the top. Either way, I want to get my cut. I want to fold it down and cut it right on my mark that I just put right there on the step, okay? I'm going to follow that all the way around. Now we got our carpet cut where it's going to meet in the center of our step right there. That's exactly what we want. What we want to do now is place a point right here at the corner of our riser here. I'm going to do this so you can visually see it. Place a point right here at the corner of our point. And I'm going to fold this in and get right on my center point right there. Get me a little line right there. Now what we want to do is connect these dots. Right there. Okay. So it looks like a big V right there now. Now keep in mind, this only goes halfway, okay? So this, therefore, this is not going to go all the way to the step, okay? So kind of gauge the distance from what we have left. We want to gauge the distance, what we have left here, this void right here, and we want to make a mark. 
from this point, leaving the distance we had left there to this edge of your piece here, okay? So ultimately, it will be a 90 degree corner, but we want to make it, it was about a quarter inch, so I'm going to make this cut right up there, leaving a quarter inch here, okay? Because that is that needs to go all the way down and close up on this line right here, okay? I'm going to do the same thing here from that point right over and again i'm leaving about a quarter inch of backing right here okay i hope that's making some sense we want this to be able to close up right there after we make this cut i'm going to use my scissors to do this and i'm just going to cut out this W per se. Looky right here. So it, it ultimately makes a W cut. It goes down, up, down, up. Okay. So we're just going to cut that out. And whenever we get done, it should fold around there and close up nicely. Okay, we got that all cut and ready to go. Next thing we need to do is apply thermoplastic to this tread. Close all of this up. I like to do this one at a time, so I'm going to do my centerpiece first. That way I just have more control over everything and I can work it together nicely. Be real careful not to get your face pile over in the hot glue. I'm going to go ahead and do my top piece next. Get me some more fresh glue here. Again, I'm smearing it like that so that it does not run down where I don't want it, okay? You want to take time with this and close it up just like a regular seam. I have some cut fibers right here, so I'm going to snip them out. That way they're not cut fibers here will look just like cut fibers does on a seam. So you don't want them here just like you would not want them on a seam. Hold my pressure for just a second and let that cool. And we can move on to the bottom piece now. A carpet awl is really handy for this because you can use it to pull your fibers back out of the way and just be real specific with your placing of the little pieces and such like that. We got that done. I'm going to go ahead and now instead of and put some glue on this piece right here. This is the last final piece. And we are going to be good to go. Again, just taking my carpet all and pulling the fibers back. And closing that right up. Hope my fingers were not in the way too much of doing that. Just like I did on the front of my step here, I'm going to do the same thing back here. On these two corners, I'm going to take my crane power tacker and I'm going to shoot a staple in this corner and right here in this corner. And that's just going to take those fibers. Whenever you shoot a staple in it, they can be opened up and you shoot a staple here. When you put pressure, it just draws everything together like that. So it's going to pull those fibers all together like that and just close up those corners nicely. That's why I choose to do that. Same thing on this top corner. Okay. Again, take your shears and trim up anywhere 
that you need to to make everything pretty. One last thing to finish off this step. I want to take my stair tool and mallet, give that a nice, nice little tuck down in there. Then I'm going to take a good blade, cut off that extra piece of carpet, holding my knife at a 45 in that gully right there so that I'm sure not to cut it too long or too short. Okay, one last thing. Now I'm going to take, uh, because this is nothing has been done with this edge over here, I always like to get a pull across my step just like I do front or bottom to top of my step. So I'm going to come around on the side, kick it up that direction. Now that snap that will stick it right on the tack strip that I've had placed on the side. Now that gives see how this is stuck now. So not only is it stuck on the back and on the bottom, it's also stuck over here on the side as well. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Maybe you can take something that I shared here in this video and use it on your daily jobs. Once again, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Maybe they are needing help with some kind of upholstery work or something on their steps. Thank you guys for tuning into the channel. Until next time, FBSB's out.